Well, good morning. Hello, this is Trafalgar Valentine coming with another video today. Now, I like to do lots of variation different vehicles here and there, so today we're going to be working on a 1948 FX Holden, which is like an off road kind of buggy kind of thing. It's going to be mo heavily modified. Now, you might not know what this vehicle is, you may not have heard of it before, but wait a second. The 48 Holden was actually a buzzard in the Mad Max film. And the buzzard that it is, is the one that you see coming on the left hand side that when the that gets shot with that quad cannon by that other Jaguar on the front. I'll quickly show you a quick clip. And the buzzard that it is, is the one that you see coming on the left hand side that when the that gets shot with that quad cannon by the other Jaguar on the front. I'll quickly show you a quick clip. Yes, that one. So to start off with this, it's heavily modified so but I'll show you go through the basics and stuff like that of the shapes. So I'm just gonna do a the wheel first. Just sketching in lightly in pencil first and then we're going to pen and ink. So I'll do the front first front tires. The modified this sort of look look like a buggy almost. There's very little of actually the Holden actually existing. But uh, yeah, it's one of the buzzard vehicles, one of the scavengers that you see on the left hand side. Turn that back wheel a little too small. Excuse me. Just trying to get the dynamics right. Okay, so this is the front wheel, the back wheel will probably be around here. So, it's quite a lot of ground clearance, so I'm doing the body raised up a bit. Like I said, it's on a buggy chassis. Comes up here. And the body, it's all like a hot rod style, so it's got the open top engine. This is a heavily rough car as well, so it's got a lot of scrappage damage and stuff like that the buzzard vehicles are merely made of lots of different parts from different vehicles it's just been scavenged and stuff so they can simply just come over and destroy okay so that's the body shape can you see that okay i've still got my negative filter on i keep forgetting but i think it looks pretty awesome with the filter on side window there And the front grille is kind of what's remaining of what's left of the buggy, of what's left of the Holden, should I say. Which comes around like so. so vertical lines going down. And it's got this heavy suspension that comes up quite high. Okay, and for the engine block, you're not going to actually see much of the engine, so I'm just going to do a rough square shape there. Might extend the body forward a little bit, like so. Some rims for the tyres. Okay, then it's good for the basic shapes, basic shapes, basic shapes, where's my pen at? Okay, so so that gets more detail for the rims of the wheels. The 
these photos I've got for a, a reference from a website that has all the listing of all the Mad Max vehicles. And for a person who enjoys drawing cars and stuff, the Mad Max vehicles is absolutely perfect because I just love these cars. Front wheels and do some work on the front here. It's quite hard to actually find a good picture of the buzzards and stuff because the ones that I've taken are, are all in movement, we're all in action scenes and stuff. So there's a lot of dust flying in the area and stuff. But I'm doing my best what I can see from the pictures I've got. I'm not doing this absolutely perfectly, like I said this is kind of a scrappage kind of car so there's a lot of rough edges here and there. So we need to do the behind this wheel so we'll do a brake system. You see that alright? Yeah. Then we've got the suspension coming up here. Just gonna do some lines going across. So, and one this side. It's actually got a spinner sword on this side, but you can't really see it. Okay. This is built with a lot of spikes into it. It's quite hard to see where the spikes actually start and begin, so I'm just going to do some random spikes here and there. There's over a thousand different spikes on the vehicles and stuff, so there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of detail. I'm just getting my ruler. Just doing some spikes there. Okay, start my use some spikes at the back. Keep these spikes different shapes. Sometimes I'm not going to use my ruler, just get a and do some fast paced shapes just to keep the variation different and stuff. These these are just cut from scrap so they're not precise or anything like that. Then just weld it straight on. So it's looking fine. Some spikes here. I'm not doing a circle at the bottom, I might just do a few dashes to indicate welds. So it's like smoothed over. Spikes there. Nickname this The nickname this vehicle the Plum Digger. Plum Dinger? Yeah, Plum Dinger. It's a strange name, but uh, I think it suits it actually, the Plum Dinger. Plum Dinger Buzzard. That was an awesome idea to create sort of a tribalism of the gangs of the post apocalyptic world to have these buzzards. It's a fun idea. The biggest spikes is actually on the roof, maybe just to protect it more. You actually see this one uh, smashing into a motorbike at one point, and then the Jaguar comes around and just ploughs it <laughs> into oblivion. Like so. Spikes here. You can just see where the window is, doing these lines of rough. This is actually a back door. It's actually a five door hatchback. So just do that. Okay. 
<laughs> Can you imagine if you saw one of these vehicles travelling down the road at 80 mile an hour? I, I don't know what you would do. You saw this behind you. I think I would just panic and then pull over or something. I don't know. I've seen some mean cars in the street, but I'll have never, I've never ever seen anything like this before. Thank God. <laughs> Okay, it's looking good. Just do a few shapes here to indicate the engine. I haven't got any pictures of actually what it looks like. I've got a few pictures before the actual spikes, it's a little bit helpful, but you can't quite see the front. Okay, I think it's looking good anyway. Second front wheel here. Okay, that's looking nice. There's actually a second engine, I think, at the back as well, which you can't see, but I think it's a bit of extra power. It's got that extra ground clearance as well. It's quite high, like half a foot, I think, at least. Uh, okay, I think that's looking nice, nice sharp buzzard effect, let's go into some more details on the front, I like to use, when I use my biro, that's why I'm using just a black biro for this, I like to do a feathering technique, I don't know what's a precise technique to actually call it from a professional studio's perspective or from a college perspective, I'm just I'm self-taught artist, and so all the techniques that I use, I don't use the proper terminology because I just don't know what other places use them. But I'm just using a feathering technique, which is where just lightly brush the biro up to create a transition effect from the light to the dark. I feel like using a biro, it's quite good to get sort of like a pencil effect, but a lot more darker. So, probably do a lot more vehicles from the Mad Max series just because I, I just saw it recently and I thought, oh man, I've got to draw some of these. These are so freaking awesome. Not just the buzzards, but also got the pole cat tribe. Their vehicles are a little different just because they've been modified to have the poles travel backwards and forwards and they've got engines on the bottom for counterbalance and stuff and the wheelbase at the bottom is a lot more wider it's looking good so yeah i'm just keep on doing this feathering technique across keeping it highlight in the center This part behind the spikes where the engine is going to be the darkest part because you can't see it the most. So I'm going to go on my black fine liner and just going across here. Got to make sure they're going between the spikes as well. Just make them stand out a bit more. You'll see this is the white highlight, but I keep on mentioning it as black. Sorry, I keep getting the filters on. Do, 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 do. I don't think there was any particular choice for the vehicles that they actually made apart from a few a few of the star vehicles like uh, the people use limo the main war rig Nux's vehicle and stuff like that they were kind of pre-designed before the movie just so these rest of the ones, I think they're just found somewhere in Australia, I'm presuming scrapyards and stuff like that, and decided to use them. Now for this, because this is quite a rough texture, so I'm going to use a lot of different lines and stuff. If 
I wanted to do like a smooth chrome texture out of a solid black line. But because this is a rough texture, I'm using a lot of different dashes and stuff to indicate lots of different surfaces on here. So around the edges as well and things. So. Yeah, what we're using is a pencil, ruler, and a biro, so it's not that much complicated materials and stuff. I am just doing quick YouTube tutorials on here, so I'm not going to professional stage. I mean, if I was professional, I'd use a lot more different variety of things. <clears throat> like so, I like these vehicles just because they're quite easy to draw as well. Although there are complicated all these different spikes on and stuff, it's still the rough skeleton of a of an old car with just spikes added on top. It's an interesting way though to modify a vehicle. I wonder if it'd be great for a zombie apocalypse. These kind of vehicles. The only problem is that because they're so lightweight, it's like a lightweight off-road buggy. It'd be good for like quick defense and ramming and stuff like that. But I could see all these different spikes on them might start collecting zombie bits and stuff out and before you know it'd be weighted down by all these zombies stuck to all the spikes and stuff. Do, 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 do. I wonder if there's gonna be another Mad Max sequel. I wonder what kind of vehicles I'll have in that one. I'd love to do the mother buzzard. That's the one with the activate the yeah, the digger on the back. It's got the bu double buzz saw as well on the front. That's so cool. Okay, let's have a look at that. Just doing details here and there. The majority of the shadows, I'm going to try and keep on one side of the spikes. Just to keep the light source. So for these spikes, I'm going to do a light source coming from the top. So I'm going to do the darkened edges. Darkened, sorry, the darkened edges, edges on this side. And I might do some completely jet black just behind them, just to indicate some sort of some that go behind it. And do some rough work on the bodywork. I wonder how fast these are going to go. It's been stripped down a lot. So it'll be a lot more lighter. I don't know if the edges are souped up as well. You know what's really, really puzzling to me is that when you first see them, the buzzards and the speaking, what they're doing on an hour patch or something, speaking in Russian, why would the Russians be solituded in Australia in a post apocalyptic world? That's a story in itself. How did the Russians <laughs> invade? But hey, I mean. You never know what could have happened in the wartime and stuff. I know this movie was over a year ago. It's kind of everything's been talked about on YouTube about it and stuff, but there's still some awesome vehicles on it. Okay, it's looking good. A lot of the vehicles that I draw, I don't really pre-plan beforehand where I want things to go. I kind of just have pens in my hand and have a, a perspective on what I want to actually show with generalised shading and stuff like that. And sometimes it's not quite obvious exactly how much of an area I want shading, so it's sort of like a typewriter effect where I go backwards and forwards over a majority of places. Just teasing it with different pen lines, different 
indications here and there until I'm actually satisfied with what I'm doing. In other practice you'll know how much to actually do and when to actually stop. Okay, let's go into a grey pencil just to darken some of these because I've got white paper in the background. Because I've already got the shading of the, bl of the black line stuff beforehand, I'm not too bothered about going too much. What I will do is I'll go over this in pencil and then I'll erase some lines here and there in the pencil just to give some sort of highlight effect where there is shiny metal and stuff. I'll probably should do the wheels as well, hand in them. Yeah. So I'll probably just go into time lapse which while I'll go over this in pencil and I'll show you the highlights that I'll do. Okay, so you can see that I've done quite a lot of other details here and there. I've just filled in the inside there just completely in black just to emphasize that shape. Continued with a few more spikes at the back here. I've done these in completely in black just to give a different transition between the ones in front. Just to give a bit of contrast to make those grey ones that I've done stand out. I've also done some more details on the wheels. I'll just finish off this rear wheel to show you what I've done. So I'm just going with the fine line pen. I want to indicate the shape going round. And for the hook in the centre. Like so. The ball's going round. Okay, now we're just going with the biro as well, just to break up the contrast between the dark black and then just to emphasize the shape. So, just pivoting my hand around the wheel of the tyre. Just doing this loosely with the biro. I've turned the page a bit just so I can pivot my hand a bit better. Especially with these round shapes. So, for the tread, I'm just going to do some lines going across wheel smooth that edge out then I'm just going to do a zigzag line in the center like so same for this one okay I want to emphasize some maybe dirt on the ground as well so from this wheel just do some lines flicking up. Maybe better to actually do this with the biro.
do some grey tone as well underneath. Okay, I think that's about it. Okay, here's what it looks like without the filter on. I think it looks pretty awesome. The plum dinger from Mad Max Fury Road. Old car modified to this awesome buzzard for this film. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be back with another one quite soon. I might do another buzzard actually. I really enjoyed doing this. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.